and you will have noticed by looking at data stream, if you notice by looking at data stream, I'll play with the throttle once more, we never went beyond 1.33 grams per second. So let's go back to show all. When I do that, up comes all of my data stream. Remember we talked that frequency was listed under, under the direct hit. We looked at it and saw what we had in our embedded repair information. Let's come back down. We'll find mass airflow again. And then we'll see what it shows for, for frequency. And then we got uh, <laughs> zero hertz at this point. I think it said we're supposed to be at 1.2 grams. Once again, I kind of forgot what my spec was, but I think it said 1.2 grams. So I'm going to go ahead and down key again to show DI info. We'll go to our embedded information. All right. At this point, I'm going to go to my embedded information and I'll tap on show DI info. This is actual information inside the Pegasus, built in. I'm not on the internet now. And we're well out of range. So now I'll close out my show DI info. We're supposed to be 1.2 to 12, which is 1200 hertz. You'll notice that uh, 1.2 thousand hertz is what it showed, 1200. We're at zero. I'll snap the throttle. There won't be any change. So once again, let's review what we've done. I got my fault code. I went and got my repair information. I went to the, hot, to the internet to get my repair information. At that point in time, when I did that, what I've got there was a hotline archive that told me what to check and what to test. And then I physically went out and I went and typed in mass airflow sensor for a supercharge. When I did the supercharge, which I'll show you again in a little while just so you can see it once more, when I did the supercharge, it took all the names of what mass airflow sensor could be called, MAF, vein flow, airflow sensor, whatever. And it kind of was able to get a specification. After I got my specification, I was able to get a component location. And then I got a wiring diagram. Even though I had all that, I did go back to data stream to verify what my mass airflow sensor was doing. I went and looked at data stream. We looked at grams per second. I went and found that we had embedded or information built into the Pegasus that showed what we were supposed to see, which was three to six grams per second on mass airflow. We were only at 1.3. There was no change when I played with the throttle. Then I went and looked at mass airflow sensor and frequency. It showed the same spec and showed DI info of the repair, repair information built into the tool. And we were at that time at zero hertz. So now let's go look at what else we have. I'm going to come back out. I'm going to tap on menu. I'm going to go back to my um, 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 uh, scope. When our scope comes up, we're going to go ahead and test our actual component. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the scope. I'm just going to show you a few things that we can get for repair information there. But once again, so you'll understand, I went and got my fault code. I got my repair, repair information from direct hit at the internet, right at my fender. I have not left this car. David has me trapped here. I have not left. All right. From there, when I got my repair information, I went back to data stream to verify that my component had failed. Now I'm going to go to lab scope and check it out electrically and see what's going on. So right now, I'm going to tap on component test, which is my actual um, automated ability of setting up my lab scope. I'm going to go right down to my mass airflow sensor. When I tap on that, I'll have two available tests for me. At this time, I'm going to select voltage test. When I tap on voltage test, it'll set up the scope automatically for me with the correct amount of time and the correct amount of voltage. Obviously, that makes your life a lot easier because if you're not 100% sure how to hook up a lab scope and how to use it, the most difficult part about using a lab scope is setting up the time and the voltage. We're going to teach you that in approximately 90 days in our next webinar. So please do join us in 90 days from now. But let's keep looking at this right now. We've got the instructions now to hook it up. It tells me what to do. It tells me to go ahead and take the yellow scope lead and hook it up. But I don't remember what the wire color was. Let's go back and look at what repair information is in there from the Pegasus. I'll tap on info. I'm going to go ahead and tap on diagram. Up will come my wiring diagram. And once again, I'm going to show you a picture of the mass airflow sensor in red. I'll show you a picture of the engine controller in blue. And there's my wire that I want to hook to, the mass airflow sensor signal, yellow in color. But now I want to know what does the mass airflow sensor connector look like? Where is pin A on that mass airflow sensor? So I'll tap on info. I'm going to go ahead and tap on um, connector diagram. 
and there's pin A on my connector. The locating tab is at the top, but if you look at your mass airflow sensor, you'll notice the locating tab is there for me to find pin A. Pin A is to the right of the connector. And now back probe that connector. Once I've back probed that connector, I'll hook up my yellow lab scope lead to the yellow probe, but if I forgot how to do that, I'll tap on info once again. I'll tap on procedure, and there's my repair information built into the Pegasus. So it's there both ways for you. So now let's go ahead and show the full scope lead, scope screen. I'll hit full to increase the size of it. That's the size of the instructions, now I'll hit hide. I should be seeing a square wave, I'm not. My mass airflow sensor is in trouble. I've got a broken wire or a loose connection. So at this point in time, let's go ahead and look at some other repair information that's available to you. I'm gonna tap on menu, and now I'm gonna strike up to physically see what's available on my menu screens. I'll tap on diagnostic information, and now I want to physically go ahead and go to direct hit once again. And when I go to direct hit now, I'm not in a fault code. I'm away from my fault codes this time. If I'm dealing with a drivability issue or a no start condition, where I've got a drivability issue that's related to my mass airflow sensor or whatever component I'm dealing with, I can then type in the initials or the name as I know it for that mass airflow. If I was dealing with TPS, TPS, or if I was dealing with, with um, uh, uh, O2 sensor, I could type in O2 sensor or HO2S or whatever I call it. Right now, I'm going to call MAF. So I'm going to tap in MAF. Again, we're doing a Google search once more. When I tap in Enter, up will come the same selection screen asking us for what vehicle we want to deal with. I'm going to use the same thing, model with the same engine package, plus or minus two years. And now you'll see that the supercharged search took every known possible name for mass airflow. MAF, mass airflow, mass airflow sensor, airflow meter, mass airflow, airflow sensor, airflow meter, vein airflow, whatever name you could think of. It's called the supercharged search. And it's done it for all the models plus or minus two years of this particular vehicle with the same engine. Pretty wild. And if you notice, we've got tabulated over to the far left, all the tab keys showing us everything that's there. TSBs, posted fixes, repair track, hotline archives, all right at my fender, right to the direct hit. And if you look over, I'm again looking at that icon in the upper right, you'll see that I'm still connected to the internet, I am still wireless to the car. All that is there for me right here, right now, right to the car. Not only that, I've got not only TSBs, but I've got articles, OBD2 data, wine diagrams, component location, specifications, and spec groups. And I can take my speed scroll and look at what's there. I've got my hotline archives and everything that's there for me. Uh, Steve, one more thing we want to talk about is uh, something that we're doing for our customers to talk to each other. It's a forum that we'll be creating, and please be looking for this information, folks. Uh, it's called tech to tech and we want you to talk to each other and uh, let us know what we can do for you. Uh, it's called the Tech to Tech Forum and there'll be information sent out to you via email. We'll be advertising this. It'll probably be uh, live and ready in a couple of weeks, but we do want you to know that we're providing this uh, for you so that you can uh, discuss information on our tools, on problems you're having, and uh, just let us know how things are. Once again, thank you, la ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on our Code to Fix. Once again, we went and got a fault code, we went and got our repair information, and then we physically went through a guided path of everything we needed from wiring diagrams to specifications, went to data stream to verify the failure, then went to lab scope to verify the failure, and then repaired the car. So again, that was linear diagnostics, a guided path straight down, fault code, fault code to repair information, all the way down to the repair. Once again, thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next time for our LabScope session, 90 days from now roughly, and I look forward to seeing you all once again. Thank you and good night.